unique things to remember. Now, here's what now turns wisdom and faith into reality, and that's activity, muscle. The labor, the work. Some people go for affirmations, but see that. I do believe in affirmations, but here's the key on affirmations, and that is to affirm the truth. Affirm the truth. If you're broke, best thing to affirm is, I am broke. That third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. So many people try to talk me out of starting a ride company, it was, it was crazy. One good friend of mine collected a whole series of videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. We're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed. And we've been fortunate, and at least thus far, they have succeeded. Now is the time to take risk. You don't have kids. As you get older, your obligations increase. And once you have a family, you start taking risk, not just for yourself, but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that. Uh, before you, before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. Ted Turner just gave his 75th anniversary party on CNN a few months ago. And he, has, he makes a couple of comments and he says, number one, and I'm not suggesting this for everybody. It's how I live though. Uh, first 10 years of my uh, starting CNN, uh, I slept on my couch, I, had, I didn't have an apartment. Bill Gates slept in the office. Steve Jobs slept in the office. And I can go down a whole list. Now these are super successful, mega wealthy guys. I slept in my office. Not everybody's willing to make that sacrifice. But it's not the only thing. But even if you don't sleep in your office, if you want to send your kids to a better school, if you want to be able to take care of your mother when she gets dementia, if you want to, do, this all takes money. When I, my children aren't getting any of my money when I die. Not, not one centavo, not one penny. And um, uh, two of my kids are cool with it. One of them's not so cool with it. I'm not going to, you know, I, I think Andrew Carnegie, by the way, Andrew Carnegie, arguably the richest, most successful entrepreneur of all time. He said that uh, the, the best thing that you can have for a child is him to be born into poverty. And I agree. Here's a whole wide range of things that we need not lack for appetite of things to accomplish. And that's called the promise of the future. And without that promise, life becomes a little less worth living. If the promise is clear, we will pay the disciplines, we'll pay the price, we'll read the books, we'll take the classes, we'll learn the skills. So that's one of the first things is to articulate the promise. Big job. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. You gotta take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines. Start first with the smallest of disciplines and do not neglect them and do not disregard them as being trifling. Everything matters, everything's important. Good phrase to take home. All disciplines affect each other. Positive side, every new discipline affects all your other disciplines. If you'll get some new things going, make some calls you've never made before. Step up your activity level, step up your labor level. Go for the disciplines, the smallest of disciplines, the least of disciplines. Like keeping your accounts in order. Here's number four, get better. There isn't any of us that can't get better. So turn on this whole idea of personal development and personal growth. That was what my teacher shared with me that changed my life. I'm telling you, for things to get better, you gotta get better. Don't ask for it to change out there, ask for you to change here. Don't ask for a more favorable wind. We call that naive. Don't ask for better seed, better soil. This is the only planet you got. Just ask that you can get wiser and stronger and better. You put that up on the refrigerator where you can see it every day. <laughs> It'll drive you to sign up for a class to learn a skill so that this doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> now, if that doesn't do it, uh, reaffirm and put this up there. I'm 40 and broke. See, that's, that's a lot more alarming. 
And if that doesn't work, put this up there. I live in America and I'm 40 and I'm broke. Something is wrong. Not with the country now. You don't have to build a raft. You don't have to build a raft and go to another country. Something might be wrong with your philosophy, your policy, your plan, and your strategy. So, affirm, yes, but always affirm the truth. Here's what the old prophet said. The truth will set you free. Now, here's the freedom of the truth. Number one, freedom of the truth to correct old errors in judgment. That's the freedom of the truth. Because if you don't speak the truth, then you're likely not to correct the errors in judgment. If something's wrong, but you say, hey, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. How are you going to correct the errors in judgment that made it wrong? See, you can't say it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and finally it turns out to be fine. Say, no. The only way to go from wrong to fine is not by affirmation. The way to go from wrong to fine is to figure out where the errors in judgment were by speaking the truth. Something's wrong here. Finding out what's wrong, making the changes. Now it can go from wrong Here's a good phrase, affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Now here's what else the truth does. First, it sets you free to correct old errors in judgment. Here's what else it does. Helps you to set up new easy disciplines to turn wrong into right, to turn lack into prosperity, to turn skepticism into faith. How did you figure you were going to start a car company and be successful at it? Well, I, I didn't really think Tesla would be successful. I thought we would most likely fail. But I thought that we at least uh, could address the false perception that people had that an electric car had to be ugly and slow and, and boring like a golf cart. But you say you didn't expect the company to be successful? Mm -hmm. Then why try? If something's important enough, you should try, even if you, the probable outcome is failure. Or how do you think about making a decision when everyone tells you this is a crazy idea? Or where do you get the internal strength to do that? Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough that you, you do it in spite of fear. Lack of self-esteem, uh, lack of self-worth. Now, they think they have self-worth. They think because they've made a few bucks. But in actuality, and when they measure it against the other 8, 10, 12 people sitting around the table, they realize, or they start to question, hell, maybe I was just lucky. Now, all of us, when you're only a one-trick guy or gal, think, was I lucky? Now, I've done it so many times, I know I'm, I wasn't lucky. I might have been lucky the first time, but I'm not, I haven't been lucky the 15, 20, 40, 50, 60. I know that. Okay. But maybe I was lucky the first time. The, but my life changed when I went, I was pretty much a, a, a haphazard kid, got in a lot of trouble, got arrested four or five times, thrown in jail. And this is when my dad's a cop. But then I went, I volunteered for the draft um, in 1966 at the height of the Vietnam War. And um, I went to OCS and that changed my life because it was the really first real high performance thing that I could measure myself against other, with other people.